There is a hidden history that's been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world, and that's why I am on the trail of the Nephilim. The Genesis 6 narrative states that the Nephilim are on the earth in those days and also afterwards. If that's true, can we find evidence that corroborates this? I'm L.A. Marzulli. Join me as we go on the trail of the Nephilim. We bring in John Stewart Fryer today. I think you'll find this very interesting. We are by the Missouri River. We just finished the wonderful River Bend Calvary Chapel uh, conference over the weekend. The, the, the church was packed. Thank you all for coming out. And we had a great time of, of fellowship with uh, those who attended. So thank you for, for that. But we're here, and this is in some ways Mound Central. So we'll get into that. But first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Reign in wealth like King Charles with a gold IRA from Noble Gold Investments. Just as King Charles' magnificent gold crown symbolizes wealth and power, a gold IRA can fortify your own financial kingdom. Imagine the confidence that comes from a retirement backed by a tangible, proven asset. That's right, folks, it's gold. And we've invested with Noble Gold, and frankly, I'm glad we did. This asset that's not at the mercy of unpredictable market swings. A crown may not be included, but isn't a future free of financial stress a worthy throne? Like royalty, enjoy the luxury of choice. Gold, silver, platinum, or palladium, the realm is yours to command. Fend off concerns about economic downturns and let your wealth thrive with the timeless security of precious metals. This month, the first solid one quarter ounce gold standard bullion coin ever issued with Charles III's image can be yours with your own qualifying gold IRA or 401k rollover or $50,000 or higher. Folks, you can't go wrong with Noble Gold Investments. Call Noble Gold 877-646-5347 to get started or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. That's once again, noblegoldinvestments.com. I'll say it again, folks. My wife and I invested in gold and boy, am I glad we did. John Stewart Fire, thanks so much for coming on the record. We've been talking about this for, for years, actually, and um, so here we are. And the one, I mean, we could go on for hours because of your knowledge and, and the amount of time that you've spent in looking at the historical record and tying things together. But we're going to drill down on just one particular item today. All right. And that, and we've heard about this up in Ohio. There were there were graves, and in those graves nothing was bigger than four feet so these are the little people and we've heard about this apparently they live side by side the giants so something is going on tell us about that please uh i'm going to first read from uh, goodspeed's uh, history of franklin county and other county missouri uh, published in 1888 mr goodspeed did this commercially he did lots of counties in missouri and other other states but uh and he compiled it from earlier histories. He obviously was not a historian of in such a broad scale. Uh, this I've entitled Short Graves on Bluff over Missouri River, less than two miles from River Bend Calvary Chapel, which is where we sit right okay. now. Okay, wow. Uh, and the subheading, this now I'm quoting uh, Goodspeed's history. Ancient inhabitants, the first inhabitants of Franklin County were the mound builders. But it's only by the exercise of the imaginative faculty that the county can ever be repeopled by that most interesting and mysterious race, whose existence was as much of an unsolvable problem to the Indians as to us. Let me just stop you right there, because this is before the, the status quo. This is before the, the existing paradigm was in place. So this guy is telling us 
in my opinion, the truth. What are your thoughts when you read that line? Uh, I think I, I highlighted that <laughs> I highlighted when I read just or emphasized uh, just because of that. I have, we, we know that and I also when you look at the history of the Smithsonian, mm -hmm. which uh, there's a another Henry Rose Schoolcraft. Are you familiar with Henry Rose mm -hmm. Schoolcraft? Yes. He was here too. And uh, he I'll, I'll tell you more about okay. him in a little bit. Um, but <clears throat> Obviously, to me, it's it's a cover up. Uh, the The story should not change. History should not change. Interpretation, of course, does change, but this is an interpretation with an agenda overlay. So to just just emphasize that again, read that line because he says basically that the the Native Americans, the indigenous people who were there at the time of his writing, didn't know where these people came from. Yeah, he he. School uh, Goodspeed called them a uh, most interesting and mysterious race, and whose existence was as much of an unsolvable problem to the Indians as to us. And it was, it was 1888 when it's published, but they've been talking about. It. We you can go into probate records in the Missouri Historical Society archives mm -hmm. that show James McKay, a major major landowner and he was instrumental with Lewis and Clark as well. Uh, in his probate, uh, I think I can re recall, I'm doing from memory, mm -hmm. there's paper, the Indians didn't build these mounds, okay? So he, he was interested in it, and he's interested enough to give the maps, actually to fund in, in 1795. I, uh, oh, that goes way back. Yeah, well, yes, uh, that was up the Missouri River mm -hmm. to the Mandan Indians, mm -hmm. you know, in the uh, way up in what's now North Dakota now. And they said the same thing that they were here before we got here. We well, don't know them. The, that I'm on a rabbit trail, sorry, but the, okay, the Mandans sorry. were there was a belief, and Thomas Jefferson was certainly interested in it. Mm -hmm. The Mandans supposedly spoke a dialect, uh, a Native American dialect, but it was very close to Welsh. Interesting. And there's a, a, I'll call it a myth, but I, it may be well fact, uh, that uh, I think his name is Madoc, came from Wales in 1150 AD. Wow, and, and I've heard this story before. Okay, I've heard and that story, yes. at that time, what's now the Mandans were in the Ohio Valley. Which completely rewrites history as we know it. Oh, so yeah. pick up the story where, where you left off before I. Right. Uh, rudely interrupted you. As it it says the relics of the map, uh, the relics of the mound builders, are found everywhere throughout the county. And that's Franklin County. Okay. One of the it was formed in 1818. And are we sitting in Franklin County? Yes, right we now? are. That's what I thought. Okay. Right across the river is is St. Charles County, and Daniel Boone lived right across the river. Okay. Is there a river from here? Um, Though they left no other records of their lives than the round mounds of earth and their simple implements of stone, yet these relics seem to indicate that particular portion of the mound builder's race that inhabited this immediate section of country ranked higher in the civilization of their day than their surrounding neighbors. This is indicated by the higher degree of skill evinced in the manufacture of the stone implements which they used than is shown by similar implements found in other portions of Missouri. It is a matter of regret that investigations have not been made as a result might throw light upon this subject, one of the most absorbing interests to the antiquarian ethnologist of the present day. The Indians were the successors of the mound builders. Mm -hmm. That's pretty clear. Yeah. Uh, as the white man is now the Indian. As one of their many remarkable natural features and curiosities in the county, an ancient relic may be mentioned. It is an old burying ground on the farm of Samuel T. Adams on a bluff of the Missouri River. It was quite distinct when the country was first settled. None of the graves were more than four and a half feet long and all were lined with rock set up on edge. According to an Indian tradition, it was a burying ground belonging to a race preceding the Indians in the occupancy of this country. So let me stop you right there. You're talking about 
you know, four feet. So this is about four feet, like right there. So four and a half feet. This is a very small human being. Yes. Very small human being. And that's the grave. That's I mean, the grave. So yes. that could have been three feet. And we've heard this before where there was like a race of very, very short people that were side by side with the giants. Your thoughts? Uh, I know that <clears throat> that happens. There's uh, giants are found or at least skeletons of giants have been mm -hmm. found not that far from here. Uh, if you go further up the Missouri River to central Missouri, to Boone County, where Jefferson City, the state capital mm -hmm. is, uh, the adjacent areas, the University of Missouri, Columbia, I mean, mounds, 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 and that the Daniel Boone sons uh, lived there for a while, but it's just dominated by mounds. So what, what does this, does it continue talking about the graves, this particular statement? Um, let me see, picking up on it. According to an Indian tradition, a burying ground belonging to a race preceding the Indians, the occupancy of this country, I read that earlier. A few of the graves were opened by the early settlers but nothing was found except small portions of a few of the bones. The rest of the skeletons having crumbled away. In some instances, there are found in the mounds flint, copper, and Chalcedony arrow and spearheads, besides many ornaments. Mm -hmm. Can you show us on the map what we're looking at here roughly? Where yes, I can. Okay. This is Bowles Township, it's been named. Ambrose Bowles is one of the very early settlers. These are on Spanish land grants. You can see that if you look over here, it's, Missouri is part of the public land survey system, which is nice uh, section, but one mile square townships, mm -hmm. with, which were six miles square, 36 mm -hmm. sections. The Spanish grants were preceded that, so they, uh, people who wanted one, surveyed it off. And the Antoine Soulard was the sur surveyor for most of these. Uh, where we are right now is right here. Okay. This is the, we are right in this spot. It had been an orchard, so it's easy to pick up. Okay. The uh, good speed, and I say as the crow flies, it's about two miles. Wow. Puts it at, uh, he says, on a farm of Samuel T. Adams, um, and it, which we know from this uh, survey 733, so it was approved by the first land board, uh, and this was, Samuel T. Adams was not the original settler, he bought this, this actually again was Ambrose Bowles. Okay. And Ambrose Bowles. Um, and this is where the gravesite is? Yeah, the gravesite, I would think, is right up in here. Is there any chance of actually going there? <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't think. We'd be on private property, and right. I, I wouldn't want to go there. I guess I could ask permission, but I, I think whatever's there is long gone is from an evidentiary point. Thanks again, John Stuart Fire, for coming on the record. We really appreciate it, and, and your knowledge and, uh, you know, going through the old, old records and finding out a, a prehistory before they manage the agenda as it were and then you know the Native Americans built all the mounds but they just forgot that they had done so and that's the official thank you it's my pleasure I mean our our job is to expose the works of the enemy and uh, I'm thank you for allowing me to be a little bit part well, of it. I, I appreciate you we'll be back tomorrow folks remember there is a hidden history that's been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world and that's why we are on the trail of the Nephilim